Here we're going to go over the difference between monocots and dicots. Pictured here, I have a representative of each of these two categories. Monocots are here, they look like grasses or small corn plants. And dicots here is represented by the bean plant. Specifically, what monocot and dicot is referring to, or short for I should say, is cotyledons. So monocotyledons or dicotyledons. And cotyledons is translated into meaning seed leaves. So in angiosperms, the endosperm is fully used by, by the time the seed is mature. Food reserves are stored by the embryo in swollen, fleshy leaves called these cotyledons, or seed leaves. Dicots have two cotyledons. An example of this would be squash, and that's just the um, seedling I have represented here. And over here I have monocots, and these have one cotyledon. These are corn plants. They look like grasses. They come up with that one single blade, where dicots have basically two seed leaves when they emerge. Now, there's many differences between the monos and dicots, more than just their seed leaves. There's differences in the number of seed leaves, as I mentioned, but there's also differences within those leaves of the way that the veins are organized. Uh, for monocots, you're looking at parallel veins. Dicots, you're looking at broad leaf, network of veins. The vascular bundles are more um, scattered in monocots, and there's more of a distinctive ring in dicots. And the flower parts are in multiples of three for monocots, in multiples of five or sometimes four in monocots. Also, the root system is very different. In monocots, it's more fibrous, and in dicots, it's more of a tap root system. Now, I'll have some of these same comparisons uh, throughout this presentation. Good to try to learn the differences or distinguishing factors between these two. Again, here's another representative image. You see the monocots here, the dicots here, showing the leaf veination, the number of multiples in their flower, the root type, when we look at the microscopic, microscopic images, we're looking at the scattered vascular bundles and monocots, a little more organized in a ring structure for dicots, and of course one seed leaf versus two. Bring in some of the real world images, you can see again how those leaves may look. Uh, dicots can be much more varied. Shows you the microscopic image of the scattered vascular bundles indicative of monocots, and the distinctive rings that are evident for dicots and the floral parts. That might be four or five multiples for dicots, or th typically three in monocots. That stem that I was talking about, the kind of organized in the ring here is the dicot. This is what I mean by scattered. You can see, yeah, there might be a little bit more concentration to the perimeter here, but overall relatively scattered throughout the stem. Bring that to a real-world root comparison now. The dicots here of this kind of central key portion kind of almost looks like a T or an X. And monocots have this kind of internal ring structure to their root system. Remember, the monocots can be more fibrous, and the dicots can be more of a central taproot system. Bring that to the larger scale, which we might be more familiar with. Here's a dicot stem, I should say root system here. And it's kind of that one central taproot. Dandelions are a prime example of this. If you ever tried to pull roots up from a grass species, or pulling up the grass in the lawn, you'll notice it's a much more fibrous root system, a lot more intertwined here. Above ground, the, the monocots look like those single blades, and those dicots have that kind of broadleaf appearance here in the different veinations. And again, dandelions are an example of a dicot, and grass species are examples of monocots. Zooming in a little bit more, comparing the leaves, and there'll be other videos to help explain a little bit more about the leaves. Uh, monocots, that parallel veination, you can see dicots, a little bit more complex network of veins in them. Uh, I believe the same image here, but bringing in now the seedlings. As we can see, the monocots are that single kind of blade that comes up, and dicots are those two seed leaves that emerge. And this could be a pea plant, this could be, like I said, a squash plant, watermelon, Many, many different things fall into these categories. This is an interesting concept. If you've ever seen this, um, Roundup for Lawns kills weeds, but not the lawn. So just what we learned about here with monocots and dicots, without getting into the specifics of the chemistry that works in this particular brand of herbicide, this is targeting the dicots. So it says kill the weeds. Most of the weed species, such as dandelions, um, in this case, clover is viewed as a weed, uh, as an example of dicots. So this chemistry is working on something specific to dicots. Where it says not the lawn, the lawn is a monocot, 
certain chemistries, um, certain plant behaviors are not going to be evident in monocots. And this particular chemical will only attack dicots. So that's how you can apply this to the lawn. It will kill the weeds, but not the lawn.